Hello. Today is February 13th, 2019. I'm meeting today with Mr. Dwight Gent at his home in Tenmouth, Colorado. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer for the Northern Colorado Veterans History Project. Thank you, Dwight, for sitting down today to tell your story. Thank you for letting me talk to you. Oh, Good my pleasure. You. My pleasure for sure. Let's start out, if we could, tell us a little bit about yourself, your date of birth, where you're born, a little bit about your family. Okay, I was born on a homestead in Moffat County, uh, December 23rd, 1922. Wow. And um, my fro folks, it was just outside of Craig, and they were, uh, oh, as they called it, proving it up, which they had to put a house on a piece of property, and then it was theirs, and so forth. And... Um, but they only, I only stayed there one year, and the second year we moved to Fort Collins. Oh, really? Yeah? yeah. What, what prompted the, the move? Well, my father wanted to go to school at A&M at the time, and uh, they just thought Fort Collins was better than Craig. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did they hold on to the homestead or sell and, and come? Well, they kept the homestead a long time. Uh -huh. They, uh, yeah, you know, but they finally got rid of it. Yeah. So you grew up uh, going through the Fort Collins school system and all, such. Here? All the way through. Uh huh. Uh, kindergarten. Talk a little bit about uh, early life in Fort Collins or uh, life in Fort Collins in the twenties well, and thirties and forties. Well, the depression, of yeah. course, that uh, made a real. Uh, impression on me because uh, nobody had any money. Of course, we had lots of friends, but uh, nobody had any money. I worked. Uh, when I got into my teens, I did a lot of work around here. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about some Oh, of please it. do, yes. yeah. Um, one place I worked was a brick factory out on uh, Taft Hill. Pieces of it, I think, are still there. What we did, what uh, my buddy and I, we loaded clay on trucks. The clay went up, and then they made bricks out of it, and then we loaded the bricks on to make uh, Fort Francis C. Warren in Cheyenne. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then I picked cherries uh, out at Terry Lake. And there was a cherry factory right there. And uh, picked cherries. But um, one of the crazy things I did, at 16, I joined the Colorado National Guard. Once again, for extra... Uh, money. Money, yeah, <laughs> sure, yeah. And uh, I was in the 168th Field Artillery. When on the big maneuvers, I don't know whether... Uh, people remember down in Louisiana. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, we were on that, and that was in about 1940, as I recall. When we got home from uh, uh, the maneuvers down there, the National Guard was put into the regular army. But I was discharged because I was underage. <laughs> well, now, when you got in, did, did you lie about your age? Did your folks have to sign, or was that... Was that an issue, or how did, uh, what's the story behind that? No, they wanted, uh, and all, all my friends joined about okay. the same time. Uh, they knew good and well how old we were. There just weren't that many people here. <laughs> but they needed bodies, and so, yeah, all my friends went in. Chuck Coffey and Bill Lowen and Leonard Wilson, a whole bunch went in. Well, that must have must have been an adventure for here's a, a Fort Collins boy going down to Louisiana and, and such. That it had to be a great adventure. I would well, think. it was. Yeah. yeah, and we guarded the place with wooden rifles, and we uh. <laughs> it was and it was trained all the way down. We rode the train and had our the artillery with us. That was quite an experience. Was there uh, any air of war? Was it war in the air at all? Or oh, what, what, yes, uh, definitely. Well. What was it, 41? Yeah. So see, that was 1940, and they were mobilizing when we got back. And so uh, I have the discharge papers and all here. Wow. <laughs> so um, then uh, 
that moved me up a couple of years and when I was in high school. And uh, I worked uh, for a clothing store downtown after hours, uh, after high school hours, weekends, which was interesting to me. And uh, <laughs> I was uh, voted um, student body president oh, wow. at Fort Collins High School. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, do you remember where you were and what you were thinking when you heard about Pearl Harbor? I, I do not. Okay. Uh, I don't remember at all. And of course, like everybody else, I was in total shock. And, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, but no, I, I didn't know, but I knew I was going to go to war, you know. Mm. And so, uh, I joined, well, let's see, I graduated in 1941 and joined immediately the Air Corps. Army so, uh, Air so, Corps. Yeah, so so this, the spring of, uh, spring of 41? Prior to, yeah, prior to uh, no, Pearl? No, no, it would have been, uh, well, let's see, no, graduation. Oh, let's see. Well, I wasn't called until 42. Okay. So. There was that little bit of time through there. So, uh, you joined the Air Corps before you went off to college, or? Oh no! Oh no! After I graduated from high school. Okay. And, and uh, now I did spend one semester at CSU before I got called in. Okay. All right. Okay. And that would have been in forty-two. Two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. And of all the uh, service branches to choose from, how did you end up choosing the Air Corps? I have no idea, except I've seen, uh, I saw kids from Fort Collins buzz us, you know, at the high school, oh. and I thought, man, I'd like to fly one of those. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, uh, I was happy to get in. Uh, Especially at that time, they really needed uh, pilots, but you, they weren't ready to train you until about six months after you joined. So how, how soon after uh, you got called up did you go take off for a basic training then? Was um, it pretty quick? Yeah, or? Oh, yeah. yeah? I, uh, and it wasn't basic training. It, it, they sent us to, well, they first sent us to, uh, we call it Pneumonia Gulch. And, uh, <laughs> in Missouri. Oh, Jefferson Barracks? Jefferson Barracks. <laughs> ah, right. And the and, nice uh, thin walls of the barracks there. I love to tell a little story about a friend of mine that was there, uh, Wayne Austin, and he was uh, in the medical group, and everybody was sick. And he said, when do you go in for your exam to get out of here? And I said, I, tomorrow and such. He said, here, here's eight aspirin. Give them two hours before you take the exam, and that's what I did, and that's the only way I think you could get out if you kill the fever. Is that right? Everybody. So you were sick as well, huh? Oh, everybody was sick. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but that killed my fever, and I went off to Michigan State. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How was that for you, that transition going from a carefree civilian into, into the military? Was that much of a transition for you at all? Oh, no, I don't think it was. Uh, we knew what to expect. Uh, everybody was in the same boat, you know, and we were getting acquainted with each other, and you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too... Any, any tinge of homesickness taken off, you know, going to Missouri now and to Michigan? And... Not really. Okay. <laughs> I guess I was just that yeah. way, you know. Yeah. So now you're off to, to Michigan for, uh, is that where you began flight school or? No, college. Oh, college, okay. College, yeah. Okay. And um, I must have been there about, I would guess, maybe two months. Now, I can't remember exactly the way I moved from there, but uh, then it was primary training, and that was, uh, I wish I could remember. Oh, no was. worries. I've yeah. got it in my file, but that. Yeah. But anyway, that was on PT 19s, and that was really a big part of the 
whole Air Force experiment because we did aerobatics. It was an open cockpit, if you know PT-19. Wow. And it was cold. We were back in Missouri someplace. And, um, but it was just more darn fun to fly those planes. Well, now, prior to joining the service, had you flown before? No. <laughs> well, I'd been in a tri-motor Ford that landed out at the airport, if that's flying. <laughs> yeah, but still. I went up and flew around. <laughs> but no, I, I'd never, and it, I don't know, I just enjoyed the whole experiment. And you took right to it? it was yeah. uh, You found it easy to... No yeah. problem. Yeah. Just everything worked out great. Passed with flying colors and then went on to basic. There I ran into a little bit of problems. I got lost once. Uh-oh. Which didn't help me. <laughs> and, uh, rather interesting. Uh, uh, these BT-13s we were flying had a very deep hull. Fusage, fuselage, I should say. And um, I had the map on my knees and it dropped. And I, oh, and I couldn't reach it. Oh, gee, no, no. So I turned it over, and, which was easy to do. I got the map, and then I figured out where I was. And I could see a water tower, and this is what they told us to do. Fly up where there's a water tower, and then you can get your direction. So I flew up. We were flying out of, uh, what was it called? Let's see. Oh, it come to me. But um, close to Oklahoma, and I flew around it and it said uh, something hometown of Will Rogers. <laughs> so I got my bearings and flew back. By that time, this field that we were supposed to fly to was closed. Oh, no. And I was about out of gas. So I didn't want to try getting back to the, where I belonged. So... Um, I got out on the road, and the next truck that came along was a good, nice Kansas farmer. <laughs> and I told him, I call my base, and they came after me that afternoon. Ah, wow. <laughs> I had funny little experiences like yeah, that. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And then moved on to um, advanced training in uh, twin engines. Now, did you have your choice uh, whether to go twin in, multi engine or single engine, or were you just that's where you're going type of thing? Almost, that's where you're going. We were at in San Antonio, Texas, and given tests, you know, on our personalities. <laughs> um, when we got through, I realized I wasn't going to be a fighter pilot mm. <laughs> because the questions they ask about what. Would you do this? And I thought, hell no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Would you? Anyway, uh, I, they put me in twin engine training. Okay. And from there, uh, graduated from twin engine and went down to Del Rio, Texas, and started flying Martin Marauders. Uh, B-26s, and uh, found out it was a lot of fun, but they were a little bit uh, on the dangerous side. Yeah. You had to yeah. be with them all the time. Right. But, gosh, when I I just fell in love with the, Really, yeah? The, yeah. I, I could, it hurt so often just how hard they were to fly and how yeah. dangerous they were, but... Uh, huh. I didn't... Uh, I, I don't know. I just had... Huh. A real go at it. Oh, and, good. And so I enjoyed it, yeah. And then after uh, flying there, I don't know how many hours, but went to Louisiana where I picked up a crew, trained there for a while. You heard about all that, calling the airplane all kinds of names, like one a day in Tampa Bay, <laughs> and a lot of them were flying out of Tampa over the ocean on their takeoffs and a lot of them land, landed in the ocean rather than, you know, it wasn't um, unusual. And then they called it the Widowmaker and uh, the Baltimore or 
Hmm. They called it the Baltimore Horror because uh, the wings were a little bit short, so it had no visible means of support. Are you good? Anyway, uh, and then uh, training there, and then shipped to England. We didn't fly; they had plenty of planes over there. Well, that uh, that begs the question once again. Here's this landlocked Colorado boy going to sea. How was that trip for you? Did you get your sea legs? And oh yeah, really, no problem with no sea- problem seasickness. Huh. Uh, nothing like that. Yeah. Just enjoyed it. Was it? Uh, were you uh, solo on, on like? Queen Mary, or was it? Were you in a in, in a um, convoy? What do you remember? What uh, going over? What situation was like there? We were in a pretty big ship, and yes, it, it had to be a convoy okay. at that time of some kind. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. We didn't get out and get around much on that ship. Yeah, I heard that it was. was kinda, uh, those in things our quarters, were just packed. Yeah. 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 Now, I imagine you were an were you an officer commission? Well, uh, no. Really? Uh, the biggest disappointment I've ever had in my life was I graduated as a flight officer. Now, that's in those days that was the worst deal you could get out of the Air Corps. Oh, really? Oh, huh. and I was devastated. And then I remembered some of the dumb things I had done. Like getting lost yeah, right. and uh, <laughs> a few other dumb things and realize they had to give somebody that oh. distinction. Um, but a little aside there, uh, one, of the, one of my last instructors said, well, I was trained as a pilot, not as a co-pilot. And uh, uh, my instructor said, now let me tell you something. When you get to Europe, don't take a promotion too fast, but they're going to promote you pretty quick. And um, it's called a field promotion, and you'll make as much as a captain instead of a first lieutenant. <laughs> really? Huh. One of my breaks in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Wow. So you guys land in England, and take your story from there. Well, we landed in England, and then we... Uh, uh, flew into France. Now see, this was when they'd already occupied uh, most of France. And um, then we uh, took a train up to um, Dijon, or that vicinity. And there's where we uh, joined the, it was called the First Tactical Air Force. Now that we were Army Air Corps, but we were in the First Tactical Air Force, and it was composed of mainly fighters and B-26s. We I, we didn't have 17s or any of those around. Was that uh, were you under? Wouldn't have been under the Eighth Air Force. Was that were, no? Which Air Force? Well, it started under the Twelfth. Twelfth. But then it actually went off on its own, called the first tactical oh, really? air. Oh, I've never heard of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, which was interesting. Yeah. Because after the war, um, we were put back in the Ninth Air Force hmm. before we came. Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so uh, with the B twenty six and the fighters, it, primary missions were to. Uh, Help out ground forces or bombing missions. What to talk about some? I guess talk about some of your missions. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, good and bad ones. You know, uh, um, we flew. We never flew above ten thousand. So which means we well one one raid we we were up at twelve before we dropped in on our run, and uh, so we never had to wear. Uh, oxygen mask, uh-huh. and we would come in pretty fast and uh, not real high, and uh, got to <laughs> stick real close to your leader. And rather interesting, we couldn't see our wings, but we sure knew where the leader's <laughs> wings were. <Jeez. laughs> Isn't that fun? Anyway, um, and. Uh, 
we uh, there were uh, there were a lot of uh, ammo dumps up uh, the river. I forget that river, but uh, man, we had that was fun hitting that ammo dumps. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. And we would hit bridges and uh, railroad, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was it was a pretty good life, really. Yeah, they never <laughs> uh, no issues with the the dreaded eighty eights or would you would you be oh, low get, enough for flack or what, oh, what would yeah, you come? We get shot at all the time. Well, what can you do? <laughs> you, you, you can sit there and worry, and maybe you'll get hit. We, we never got hit. Really? Oh, uh, uh, and some of my closest friends never got hit. But hmm. uh, the day I got there, the, uh, the roommate that I was supposed to have, he didn't come back from that mission. And uh, in the history of it, they, they lost quite a few. How does that play on a person's psyche? I mean, here's, uh, I mean, how old were you? 19, 20 years old? No, 20. 20 years old? Uh, 21. Well, actually, I was 22. At the... Yeah, but still, a 22-year-old that's lived a pretty quiet life in Fort Collins arrives to find his roommates not returning from a mission and you're getting ready to go on missions. How does that play on a person's mind? That is really interesting. And I talked to a uh, retired Air Force uh, general, uh, he and I became friends after the war. Uh, um, and I, I said, you know, it's rather strange, but you just didn't think about it. Huh. You just did your part, and you didn't think about, well, geez, I'm liable to get hit, or that. Now, um, if you did, you had procedures, you know, but uh, it just was, I think your mind goes strange. Wow, wow. And I, I, haven't, I, haven't anybody told you that before? Not really. Well, I guess by and large, you know, and the, uh, a, lot, a lot of people will say that, oh, just the youth of feeling invulnerable, you know, that, uh, that, that psychic. But, uh, and I've always wondered too, you know, uh, uh, I always ask people to talk about, you know, taking off for the mission and, you know, you're flying into harm's way, the actual mission. And then when you got back from the mission and, you know, many will say, well, you, during the mission, you're just so busy, you don't think about it. But I've always, was always curious about, what about that night after the vision, after the mission, when you're laying in your bed, quiet and decompress if that all, if it all comes back? Not at all. No. Uh. No, it never did with me. And uh, after we got back, you know, we'd go to mass and... They interrogated all of us, whatever that meant. <laughs> Just one or two guys spoke. Yeah. Uh, this was a crazy outfit, the uh, B-26s. I will never understand what they did on our returning from missions. <clears throat> we were always in three or four ship, mainly three ship formation. And they would bring you in still real close together and then they timed you to see how quick you got in after your lead ship. That made no sense to me hmm. because then you would go in for interrogation and they'd say, well, so-and-so came in 10 seconds. <laughs> hmm. I was never that bold. <laughs> How many missions altogether did you fly? Seventeen. Seventeen? Mm-hmm. I was assigned others, but uh, things happened. That, you know, one time, uh, oh, I had what we call a runaway prop, which was pretty common. And I, I took off, but I couldn't get in formation. And so I didn't get credit for that. And then another time, my um, uh, bombardier was in an accident, um, a jeep accident, going out to join us, and <laughs> broke his arm. And he and that canceled the mission. Hmm. You know, 
I wanted to go on the missions. Did, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And how big of a crew is the, the 26? Okay, we had the pilot, co-pilot, bombigator, and they were all officers, and then three enlisted men, uh, gunners and uh, uh, engineers and that sort of thing. Okay, okay. Good men. Yeah. Uh. My uh, bombigator was a big, tall Texas kid. So when you say bombigator, he handled both navigation and yes, bombardier. Okay, okay. And uh, he was nineteen when he, <laughs> but he was good. He sure brought us back every time if we were separated. So, yeah, he just passed. Hmm. Yeah. So through the years, you you guys kept in touch. Any sort of reunions or anything like that? Oh yeah. 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 Mainly with other pilots, but he was at one or two, but I would see other pilots that I'd flown with, and we were, one, one of them very, we were very close friends. Mm. Uh, he just passed about, I don't know. Um, yeah. Anything more? Well, what would, talk about what was life like uh, on the airbase when you weren't on out on on duty. Uh, uh, li living conditions, your food. What you guys well, do for entertainment? Uh, well, uh, now, <clears throat> now we were officers, and uh, I think we were babied a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we lived in French homes. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Throughout the city of Dijon. Okay. And uh, we had pretty good living conditions, and uh, uh, we'd walk to the mess hall, and uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad a life. Uh, so you interacted with the local civilians then? Uh, no. Not, not really, no? Not very much. Uh, you might say a load of one, but then, you know, a neighbor or something, but they, they didn't really want to. I think they were told, no, don't, don't mess around, and we were told the same thing. And, and, uh, was, was there much damage in the city as the, as the front line passed through there at all, or prior to... I didn't see much no? in okay. that city, no. Mm -hmm. no. Any uh, chances to take an R&R &R and go into Paris or anything like that? Oh, we had a few chances. We went, we went into Paris and... Uh, Let's see, where else? Oh, well, after the war, we went into Germany and went to one of the camps, you know. I, mm. don't, I, think it was, I don't think it was, what is that famous one, Dachau? Dachau. Uh -huh. Dachau. I don't believe it was it. I mm. was trying to remember, but I don't think mm -hmm. it. But anyway, uh, yeah, we, uh, we got around. Uh, even during the war, we were here and there. We had flights. Air shows, number of them over Paris and then. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Uh, we'd fly over in formation, maybe six planes, you know, looking pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what, do um, you remember when VE Day was announced, when Germany finally, finally uh, surrendered? Was there much of a celebration on the base, or what was that? No, there wasn't much of a celebration. We were. Uh, um, oh, of course we celebrated, but it wasn't much. The big celebration was VJ. Well, which begs the, is the next question. Was there any possibility that you guys were going to be transferred to the Pacific Theater? Or what you was... can't believe it. We tried to be. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, we went in and volunteered and uh -huh. said, we will go if you need us. About three, and they didn't pay any of the, Well, you go on and do what you're doing, which was... You know what we were doing? We were flying the B-26s into a German base and lining them up where they were torn up. Really? Huh. We did not, the U.S. did not bring one single B-26 home. Wow. Now, the reason was they were small, rather small, and the horsepower was tremendous. It was... 1800 to 2000 per engine. So you can imagine the speed, but also the 
fuel it took. Oh, right, yeah. And uh, they didn't bring any. I, I, uh, to my knowledge, there's not one flying in the U.S. Mm -hmm. When you go to the shows, there's a B-25 yeah, and a right. B-24 or, or 17, 17 or uh -huh. something. Yeah, you're no, right. Uh, mm. uh, but they were quite a, it's quite an airplane. Mm. Did you run into anybody from home while you were overseas? Uh, oh, now this is strange. You, this, <laughs> I, um, I, I just can't remember what or how the circumstances went about. But I was picked to fly <coughs> some GIs on, a, and this was after the war, into a, an, another air base. And um, when I went out, um, the other pilot, who of course outranked me by quite probably a captain or more, he said, now, oh, Lieutenant Jant, um, you have to stay on my ring, wing because you're, you don't have a co-pilot or a navigator with you. And I will take you into this air base, and it, it, you could see it was raining a little bit, and we didn't. And he said, you stay on my wing, and I'll line you up on a runway, and you just go on in and land and leave your ship there. Okay. So he did. Well, this sure looked like a runway when we started in, and oh, it wasn't. And when I realized that I was lined up with a taxiway and there was a hangar right in front of me, oh, hit full throttle, man, I'm glad those big old engines, and came up over that and uh, scared the hell out of everybody on the air base. <laughs> and, um, um, and I was up there by myself and I thought, oh crap. <laughs> so I... Uh, kept the heading I had, and then I made a right turn, and then I made another right turn, and I thought, oh God, that air base has got to be down there, and sure as hell. They had uh, pots out, green and red. Oh, green was come on into this runway. Oh, so I went and landed, and uh, uh, left the plane there and went into the bar and I was sitting there and here was a high school friend of mine <laughs> came in and we were talking his name was Jim Orfield and we were having a good time and he said did you hear about that plane that came in I said yes it was me and he, it was you I said yes <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what are you doing? He said, well, we're mapping Europe. And uh, I said, oh, well, where do you go? Well, let's see. Two days we go back towards the coast. And I, was, I said, geez, can I get a ride with you? He said, well, I'll talk to my pilot. He was a navigator. And he came back and he said, well, he says it's okay, but you'll be a stowaway, so... You know, if anything happens, your insurance or anything like that isn't any good. And I thought, well, who gives it? You know. <laughs> so uh, I uh, went back, and they were called cigarette camps. Uh -huh, right, Lucky Strike. And Lucky Strike, yeah. and all of those. And uh -huh. we uh, went to an air base real close, and I, one other guy came with me. It wasn't any of my close friends. They said, you're crazy. But this guy from Texas, nice guy, we went, he said, I'll go with you. And so we went and we got in there and uh, went to the office to check in to tell them we, and they said, geez, where have you guys been? They were uh, given priority on ribbons and, uh -huh. and we were loaded. Uh -huh. And we were gone in two days and another trip home on a ship. <laughs> that was, the trip home was uneventful, anything? Uh, yeah, it was terrible. Uh, it took us 21 days to get home. 
and uh, the sea was so rough okay. oh, yeah. that the prop would come out and go boom. <laughs> yeah, I've heard a number of guys say that that trip home was scarier than some of the action they saw. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it must have been a good feeling that I'm heading, I'm heading home. I mean, to, to be, yeah. how, how long were you over, overseas? It was uh, 12 months. 12 months. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, I guess we were talking mainly out about our service, isn't it? What we're doing about the service side. Oh, we, uh, if you, you are, I mean, how much longer then uh, before you mustered out? Uh, when I got to Denver, I was out. Okay. No, uh, no thought of making it a career at all? Or? No. No, no. No, it, that, it didn't. I did have a small plane of partnership. Flew it for three or four years. Oh, so you kept up your license? and Yeah, yeah. and then I gave it up. It's too busy. Then I went to, uh, when I got home, I went to see you on uh, the GI Bill. Oh, good. Okay. And and I got married in the meantime. So when, uh, you know, prior to, uh, to going off the service or you met? No, you got that back? was after I came Okay, back. okay. And we were all uh, veterans, uh, all the in all the dorms, it was filled with veterans. Yeah, and how, how was that? I heard that it was pretty tough. With everybody coming back, uh, finding housing and jobs and well, and we were school. dormitories. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. The only thing about the dormitories, they said no uh, alcohol in the rooms, and we thought, now if that isn't the dumbest. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After three, yeah. four years in the service, yeah. well, nobody paid any attention to that. But I, yeah. I made a lot of good friends there and uh, graduated in. Business. Okay. Business degree. Nine, and I graduated in 1948. 48? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then uh, take your story from there. Got okay. Yeah. Came back, Fort Collins, had four boys. And uh, they're all uh, living now. And, uh, uh, well, after was probably 15, 15, I wish I could remember, but anyway, I got a divorce. And uh, shortly after the divorce, I married uh, my present wife. We blended two families. She had a boy and two girls, so ended up with four boys, two, uh, five boys five and one. two girls, yeah. And uh, a wonderful family. All of them graduated from college. Nice. All of them out on their own doing wonderful things. Amazing people. Yeah, how oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And how long have you guys been married now? 45 years. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but she was, uh, she's, uh, uh, 10 years younger than me, so she's 80. Six, yeah. I wish I could catch her eye. I want you to meet her. But, uh, <laughs> and and what you going to do uh, professionally then? Well, um, I'd always been interested. In, now my dad was the Ford dealer. Okay. In Fort Collins, and um, he bought it during the war. He was a partner uh, with uh, uh, Leo Show a very nice guy. He and I were buddies forever, Leo. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, my dad bought it and uh, I went in with him and I went through the learning and all of that sort of thing. Loved it and oh, uh, ended up as sales manager first and then uh, I became the Ford dealer and uh, my dad wanted to uh, retired. So about 1950, oh God, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I became the Ford dealer. 
Loved it. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. so important. Yeah. Love. See, even Henry Ford wrote a little note to us. Wow. <laughs> but uh, Ford was awfully good to me. I retired 30 years ago. 30 years ago? Yeah. Wow. I sold uh, the deal to my brother uh -huh. and uh, I retired. I did not really retire. I went into the real estate business a little bit. Buy and bought and sold, but not uh, not a realtor in any manner, just investments. And, and they were good to me. So. So we talked about, so you got a blended family of seven. Uh, grandchildren, great-grandchildren? Fourteen grandchildren. Wow. Um, ten great, and uh, one more will be here in about ten days, I think. So we'll have eleven. Eleven. Great. Wow. <laughs> Love them all to death. Just wonderful people. We're just... Connie and I talk about it all the time, how lucky we are. Yeah, oh, wonderful. We've been very lucky. Oh, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Have you ever had a chance to uh, travel back to Europe and kind of retrace your steps at all? Yes, uh, a little bit. Uh, travel back with uh, sister, uh, Connie's sister and brother-in-law. And, and we traveled through all the country, and I remember some of it. Is there any remnants of your base left? Over no, no, I went out there and there just there was nothing. Uh, huh. There was a bar. That <laughs> I I dropped in and I said, you know, uh, where, where's? Oh, it's it's gone. Well, of course, yeah. you know, yeah. it wasn't an airport. It was a base. Right. 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 Yeah. So. Uh, but there was a big uh, statue someplace, I have pictures of it, uh, with the B-26 uh, in that area mm. someplace. And uh, yeah, I was glad to see that. Sure, yeah. 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 Well, you had mentioned that you, got, uh, you had priority because you were loaded with medals. What, uh, can you talk about some, what you were all awarded and received, medal-wise? Yes. I guess we've got, well, well, we can, we'll, we'll zoom in actually on that okay. one right? when we get to... Uh, of course, the big one was the air medal. Right. And uh, I got the air medal with three Oakley. And that was an uh, air medal for, what, every five missions? Or what was No, uh, no, um, we, we were a little bit, that group I was okay. a little yeah. bit different. Um, we got an air medal every time we got 100% of our bombs on the target. Oh, wow. So, uh, you know, they would circle the target, and then when we were through bombing, they could look at all the bomb craters, and if they were all in there, we got an air medal. They were hard to get. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Being yeah. shot at. And yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Keep an eye out for your, uh, your two other planes. I, mean, I can't imagine the what the pressure must have been like to, to fly, you know, when you've got all that, all that going on. <laughs> well, you don't know what's going on. Really? Uh, uh. You're just looking at the other plane, bomb bay doors open, and uh, okay, you, uh, everything goes along, and bombs away, and let's get out of here. They don't say that, but boy, we get out. <laughs> and, and we pretty much had air superiority by then. Did you have any issues with uh, any German uh, fighters uh, or? The, we were, uh, not me, but uh, where we were was down near the Black Forest. Okay. And they had built the jets, the oh, two right, yeah. ME-262s. And if one of those came up to greet us, you were lucky if yeah. yeah the pilot didn't pick on you because, but he could only make maybe two passes and then he was out of fuel. Right. We were really hitting those fuel dumps big and hard. Man, that was more fun. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh. But uh, no, uh, otherwise, uh, we had good escorts. Um, 
I know where there are most of them were not ours, but uh, so many of them in Europe were the P fifty ones, but we have P forty sevens everywhere. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Yeah. So, yeah. And they, I mean, I'm sure that they made, you know, I never did, when I was uh, flying, I never did see a German fighter. Oh, really? oh, good, good. Saw a lot of flak. And another thing uh, uh, our outfit did with the flak was they, um, before we made the raid, uh, they would take a fight, flight of three, and they loaded them with bulk, um, we called it chaff, but it was okay. it was a metal strip like, of yeah, little strip foil of foil, type. foil, uh, foil. Yeah. and they would come roaring in and drop bales of that, and that'd screw up their guns, mm -hmm. and we would come in uh, about an hour later, or probably less, yeah. Hmm. So their guns were screwed up a little bit. Still dangerous though. Those eighty eights were. Oh, they were. <laughs> they were good. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We made one raid on a um, uh, submarine base in uh, Bordeaux. Now, can you imagine it was still operating? Wow. In Bordeaux. Yeah. Right. Right on the coast. Yeah. Right it was. Uh, the heavies went in, and. Uh, it really had, they, they really had it protected. And uh, they had a tough day. We came in with anti-personnel bombs. They were mean. And by the time our raid was over, they weren't shooting at us anymore. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> they were either not, not well or they had, they had gone underground, you know. Yeah, yeah. Those pins were, I guess, pretty uh, pretty solid. Those uh, submarine yeah. pins. Yeah. 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 Oh boy. Uh, well, Dwight, as we as we wind down this interview, I know we got the very very tip of the iceberg of your story, but is there anything I didn't ask you that you wanted to talk about? Any stories that have floated to the top as we've been sitting here uh, talking that you want to talk about? So ideally, we get a fairly rounded version of your story, or, or do you think we've covered everything that you want to talk about? I think uh, pretty well. Uh, oh. yeah. I, uh, the stories that are, that happened and <laughs> changed my life. Well, that, that's always, that's always uh, the la my very last question. As you, as you look back on that period of time uh, in the service, and particularly when you're over in Europe, how did the did the war change your life, affect your life, play a role in your life, or was it just simply a chapter in your life that you went through? How would how would you answer I that? I would uh, sure made a man out of me instead of a boy when I got home. There was no question about. Uh, um, I uh, I wouldn't care to see any of my sons go through it. Yeah. Instance. But um, it was a chapter in my life, and uh, the thing about it is, I made a lot of good friends and still remember them. And you know, that's a big part of living is your yeah. friends. Yeah. So. Did you ever have any issues that many, you know, coming back from the war, any flashback nightmares, anything like that? Or were you able to put it behind you? I never did. Yeah. Oh, good. It was behind me. Oh, good. I, good. I can't. Uh, the only one I really remember is the one where the pilot put me on the <laughs> taxi strip <laughs> instead of the runway, and I still nice. wake up in the middle of the night and think, God, how did I ever get out of that mess? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dwight, I want to thank you for uh, sitting down and, and telling your story this afternoon, but uh, more importantly, I want to thank you for your service to our country. Oh, well, it was a privilege. Yeah. And they paid us. <laughs> <laughs> At oh. that time, the pay was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After the depression. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> good. Well, thank you. Well, thank you, Mike.
That was a picture of me that was when I was in basic training and we flew uh, uh, open cockpit planes called PT-19s. And uh, we're, that was in the winter. Uh -huh. and you can see the uniform and all this. Pretty warm. Yeah. Okay, this is my crew. This was before we went overseas. And um, uh, I'm uh, on the left. And then uh, Lieutenant Trent was a co-pilot. And uh, Max Sparks was the bombagator. And then uh, the gunner was Reem. Uh -huh. And Vineyard was the radio. And uh, Voigt. You notice they have uh, pretty much German names, which huh. I think is interesting. Yeah, right. Hmm. And that was at Barksdale Field, Louisiana, where we picked up our crews. Well, this is the air metal, mm -hmm. which I had three of. And then these are battle stars that, uh, for the different uh, battles we were in. This is the plane I flew. Did you guys, uh, did you guys name your planes, have any, any uh, nose artwork or anything on them? Is it being recorded? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it is, so I don't know. Uh, I'll let you leave it up to your discretion. No, uh, <laughs> uh, little Margie, I think, was... Uh, okay. But... Uh, I'll tell you after. Yeah. But uh, American campaign, good conduct. Yeah. The ruptured duck. Victory, World War II victory medal. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a very nice uh, shadow box. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That building is on Graken College, the mm -hmm. corner of Graken College. It's still there. Uh, we moved in there in 1966 and uh, it was the first dealership out on South College along. and then I think the next one was Delon Long but anyway uh, we moved out there and small town still yeah a lot of people said we're not going to go out in the country and trade with you <laughs> <laughs> But they did. They, it worked out really nice. Uh, wow. That was presented to me at uh, NADA, National Auto Dealers Convention. And that year I was the winner of the 80th, 1980th, Time Magazine Dealer uh, winner for the state of Colorado. Wow. And uh, that brings back good memories. Yeah, I'll bet. Oh, what an honor. It was quite a time. Yeah. yeah it was uh, probably the highest honor you can get. Yeah, wow.